So as we uh, have time, I'm going to first invite uh, Peter and Brenda up, okay, to come up first. Um, I thought I'd seen a, seen a couple, I thought I'd invite them up as they come up. So like I said, we're just going to hear people's stories, just a little bit of their journey of faith. I hope you've left it with them and what they wanted to share. But I have said to them, a minute or two, that's tops, because you know, 11 people. So they all get five or ten. <laughs> they all get five or ten minutes, we're in trouble, aren't we? So uh, we're really, we're really going to be wanting that. We're quite as well to we'll bring the bunties out now, we can all But so hopefully it's going to work out, we'll see how it goes. So I invite Peter Brendel first. Um, I've kind of left it with you what you wanted to share. So, uh, I'll let you, over to you, give you the microphone. Go on, Brenda. Right. Yeah, it's on, I think. Well, I was about 14 when I first met Jesus properly. I was brought up in the Methodist church. My dad was a local preacher, Sunday school. There's a, and mum was in the Sunday school. But every year we had a, a, a youth service. It was an evening service, so they had to go. They had to come to the evening service before we had to belong to the youth club uh, in the good old days. <laughs> um, and this, I was about 14, 15, and I suddenly had a feeling that I was expected to go forward. I had that's this feeling that the, you know was supposed to be expected. And as a teenager, no, I'm not going. I'm not going. But they were singing when I surveyed the wondrous cross. And when it came to where the whole realm, realm of glory, no, of nature mine, that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing. So divine demands, not just once, demands my life, my soul, my heart. And I call myself to the front, kneeling down. So you can say no all your life, <laughs> but you will be. <laughs> you get there, you keep prodding, and that's what's important, so important. Thank you. Thank you. You were up here recently, weren't you, Peter? But we've given you another go. Are you after my job? Come on, come and share a little bit about what you felt you wanted to share today. Well, um, I think you've all heard the story, haven't you? Um, as I grew up, um, church was there, but church didn't really mean anything to me. Um, there were times. Um, when we were at um, South Chad, uh, somebody might be saying for, for people to come forward, but it, it never sort of gave, gave me any push to go forward, and me being such a, a shy child in that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it didn't happen, and the service that uh, this fellow here was uh, taken that day. Um, they asked, would anybody want to come forward? And I, I suppose I sort of grip in the chair. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, um, my left hand let go of the chair. And <laughs> Before I could take it down again, somebody had passed on me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this church means a heck of a lot, and um, it's not just the church, it's what's within the church. Right. Yes. It's, it's the Jesus who's here, yes. it's more than just friendship, but for the, it, the friendship it is worth um, a lot. But there, there's something I just mm -hmm. like to read that came this morning on my uh, or our phone. <laughs> uh, it's from our uh, eldest daughter. She called around last night for. Uh, what was she called around? Her son had just come home for a weekend, so he's just gone to university. So, anyway, she came around. 
And we just mentioned that what was taking place this morning. And she sent us this text, and it, it's um, it not run the sideways, isn't it? No, just made me cry happy. <laughs> <laughs>
Bible study sessions and sound preaching. Thank you. <laughs> and they've all helped me to grow in faith. There have been many times in my life when I have felt God's presence in the difficult and the good times. And I have seen where God has used me as part of his plan to help others. I may not have a before and after story, but over the years I have felt my faith grow and deeper. I know that God loves me. I know that Jesus died for me. And that in his eyes I am precious. Thank you.
Great. So, as we continue to hear the stories of testimony uh, of our new church members today, I'm going to uh, invite uh, our soon-to-be-married couple, uh, Rob uh, and Stella, to come up and uh, to share with us. And, Okay, Stella, do you want have room to hold the microphone? Okay, well I've got I've got the mic, I've got there's a big hook. You can't see that. You know, like <laughs> of intercessory prayer, just praying, because if nobody prays, nothing changes. Right. And if you're an intercessor, you've got a mighty ministry, mighty ministry. You know, the goodness of God makes me weak, but briefly, quickly, yeah. I, 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 I was, I think I've always had a spiritual awareness, and I, I, you know, I didn't meet a born again Christian until I was in the 50s. Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> so in my thirties, because of suffering, I went into Buddhism. Twenty years of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Buddhist. Now, it, the suffering in that twenty years went off the Richter scale. It was much, much worse because the Lord wasn't with me. So in my fifties, I, I, I lost my husband. I'm on my own. I lost my sight. I lost my job. I lost my son. I lost my you name it. Oh. Anyway. I, I had to go to Manchester Eye Hospital. I had a gang <coughs> dog there. And I met a lady there who, um, I, I didn't know, I just got on with her, and she said, I'll run you home, and I'll wait for you. And she waited two hours for me. She lived in Boston, I lived in Middleton. And when we got to my front door, we exchanged phone numbers, and I said, um, you know, you really have been God sent. And she said, Well, it's funny you should say that. She hadn't talked about God. She said, But well, this is a new car. And I said, God, this is your car. I will do. I'll, I'll take anybody in it that you want to. Right? She's a lady with a lovely heart. Right. A few months after that, I met a born again Christian. Oh, and got real big, I saw the story, a real big revelation. Praise God, you know, through the Holy Spirit and revelation. And a month, few months after that, this lady called me up and she said, I, I, um, uh, I really want to see you, you know, I, I'd like to see you look at. So she came to see me and she'd come with tickets to go and see Bobby Ball at their church, you know, to with me. And, and I said, oh, it's I said, well, I said, actually, I said, I met a lovely man and um, he's a born again I think I'm a born again She nearly fell off the chair. <laughs> she said, well, that day when I left you, she said, I couldn't get you off my heart. And this is a year on. She said, I went back to my church and the whole church prayed for you. And a few months later, it's, it's, just, it's an amazing God. My, and and I, I could stand here all day and tell you the way that he's, he's, he's answered prayers. Just briefly, I can't even <laughs> briefly. <laughs> briefly, I've got to tell you this. Because I can't grief like a brick. I get up in them and then people hear that grief sticker because you feel it. I carry it like a brick. I got up every morning, it was there. I went to bed at night, it was there. And I was in I was in a good church. I got lots of prayer. And there's one particular song when I heard it, I used to hear the room. And I'm in this charity shop this day and, the, and I didn't realise the song came on and I'm singing along. Because the grief had completely, but the Lord had come. He is the God who binds up the broken heart. Mm. Yeah. 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 So keep on praying keep on and, and praise Him because he's, He wants nobody lost. Mm. 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 
this, so I had to go to Oldham now to be in Barbers. No. As I came back, Colin was in garden, <laughs> and he had to stop and thank him. So, Barbara, thank you so much. So, you know, God is always with me. I went to the brownies, the guys, the youth club, but never, never ever really knew Jesus. Then just weddings, christenings, funerals. Fast forward then. So one Monday morning, January 1987, that's firmly imprinted in my mind. I was feeling really fed up. You know, one of those days where you just, you don't know why, but you're just really fed up. Didn't know why. All was good. No problems. I bought some new shoes, <laughs> which was a passion. <laughs> Always gave me a buzz. But this time it wore off really, really quickly. And I felt really, really empty. Then a knock on my front door. A lady called Pat. She'd heard I wanted to enrol my two-year-old son, Paul, into play group at South Chatterton Methodist. It keeps coming up South Chatterton Methodist, doesn't it? She had the forms. Fast forward to Easter. By then, my good friend Pat asked if I'd like to go to Easter Sunday service. But I did. <laughs> I soon settled in and started to ask God what he wanted me to do because I just had no idea I was going, but just didn't know why really. Just having a nice time. Um, I didn't know whether he was listening or anyone was listening. But then came a celebration in at Christ Church, and I love a good sing. Um, so Pat and I decided to go. Well, as usual, everything was against it. Paul's dad was late home from work, Pat's daughter was ill, but we made it. The vicar told us to sit quietly, eyes closed. What, no singing? And if anyone had a picture in their mind to share it, a man in front saw a group of people on a beach, all having fun, laughing, dancing, and running towards the sea. But one person wasn't. They were afraid. I knew that was me. And all I had to do was follow and ask Jesus into my life. And that night I did. The buzz I got from the shoes wore off very, very quickly. But the buzz that I have from knowing Jesus will last forever. Yeah. And unlike the shoes, didn't cost me a penny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That makes you not have to buy shoes anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Great stories, great testimonies, aren't they? Praise God. Hazel, where's Hazel? There she is. Come on, Hazel. And her granddaughter's come to support today, aren't she? <laughs> Testament and it kept coming back into my mind and, it's, and it was but 
while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. Now I knew that this was from the um, prodigal son, the parable of the prodigal son. Um, when I thought about it, and um, I realised that God was telling me that even before I was born, even before, long, long before I was born, he knew me. When I was still far off in the distance, even though I wasn't even here, he knew, he knew me. And he is God Almighty and he never changes or is not, he doesn't move anywhere, he doesn't move anywhere. And I might take myself off, but all the time God has his sights on me, he has his eye on me and his love has encompassed me all my life, even though parts of my life I didn't, I didn't even think about it when I was a teenager, when I was a young mother. Um, even though I didn't think about it, his eye was on me all the time. Um, I heard a song recently, um, I've not heard it before, and it's, um, there's a line in it which says, there's a bit of a poppy song really on the radio, the Christian radio, it was quite jazzy, you know, and it said, um, even when I'm falling, I'm falling in mercy's arms, and it really struck me that, because I'm always falling, I fall every day, but thanks to Jesus, I'm forgiven and restored. Um, I don't deserve it, but Jesus paid for my sins and failings by dying on the cross. And not only am I forgiven, but I'm so greatly blessed in my life, I'm so greatly blessed. Um, um, God's mercy arms are always there for me. He's watching me. He's watched me from the beginning of time, I think. And on my journey, and my journey, being here this morning is part of my journey. It's part of um, part of my life and my story. And I thank God for it. Yeah. <laughs> Six years old, Dan left. Um, we saw him for one time a year, so that put on to me I wasn't good enough. So at the age of six, this little boy thought that he was um, got rid of by his father because there was something wrong with him. Um, for three years, we lived with my mum, and my brother, and sister, and it was good. We were poor, but it was good and honest. And then she met my stepfather, who on day one hit me. So I'm thinking, goodness, and I had from five, nine years old to 15 years. I was battered physically and mentally by him and at school and I was sexually abused by a, an old man in a Church of England church. So God and fathers were out of the window for me. Left home when I worked in a hotel as a chef. Turned to drugs, alcohol, partying, sexual immorality, thinking that was the way out. I was just hiding, hiding anywhere I could because of the pain. I forgot about it. Moved up north with my girlfriend at 22. She had a miscarriage, I thought I loved her, came home from work one day, she was in bed with a next door neighbour. So at that point in my life, at maybe 22 years old, 23 years old, I did, that was it, God, no way, absolutely no way. Um, then I met this girl, she was a Christian, and I said to her, don't ever talk to me about God, but, you know, we can go out. And, um, after eight months, I asked her to marry me, and she said, yeah, you just ask my dad. And I said, yeah, of course I will. Been warned already that this guy was a Christian. Mm -hmm. But not just a Christian, a born again Christian. He was like, Bleh. So I sat there and went, oh, Roger, can I have your daughter's honey match? She went, yes, I think it's that. He went, but will you just come to church two times? And because I loved her and I wanted to marry her, I said, yes. So I walked in. Barriers up. <laughs> no way, I'm just doing this because I love my wife. And the first person we met, he gave me this hug. <laughs> Granny Annie, and I just thought, oh wow. <laughs> but it was nice because I'm a hugger if you don't know it's that already. 
and uh, walked in and the preacher, everyone was coming up to me like, Jamie, we know about you, we love you, faith, wave, and I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on? These are weird. Um, David passed the up and said, uh, wow, yeah, I had a whole sermon thing, but actually God spoke to me last night and says that today there's something he needs to know. Our father. And needs to meet him. <laughs> and I thought, how dare he? How, how dare God to tell him that, uh, my life? And afterwards I went up to say, how dare you? And he said, what do you mean? I said, you know, that's, about, that's about me, isn't it? And he said, you're the one. You're the one. So I went away the next Saturday night, went to a nightclub, got drunk, woke up at nine o'clock next morning, phoned my fiance up and said, I want to go to church. And she went, what? I said, I want to go to church. First song, how deep the Father's love for us. At the end of that service, I gave my life to the Lord. Two services, because it was all about I needed a father. And for 24 years, it was all about me needing a father and him healing me. So ten, ten months ago, something happened, and you know, I shared about I had a new heart. God did say, you're not going to physically give me a new heart. And I have changed dramatically in my faith. And it is not about what I can get from him. Today I stand and says, what can I do for you? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> feel encouraged by hearing those stories and uh, I thought I'd just meet different people in different, different ways at different times. We have a big God and we have an awesome God, don't we? Yeah.